welcome to Africa United. Each one teach one. Please subscribe to our channel and hit notification button for the future updates. Thank you very much in advance. Okay guys, today we are going to talk about St. Peter Terra Blanche, who spent many, many years researching and writing South African history about poverty and inequality. Today's video, St. Peter Blanche explained to us how the ANC were, were, were defeated during the time of negotiation. Please listen to yourself and comment below. I want to quote something from your book, something which he said. Um, you say that on 11 February 1990, the day of Nelson Mandela's release from prison, he made the following statement. The white monopoly of political power must be ended and we need a fundamental restructuring of our political and economic systems to address the inequalities of apartheid and create a genuine democratic South Africa. That, of course, didn't take place in the last 20 years. And I, I, I want you to focus on one particular thing when you, when you answer this for me today. Um, in the book, you contextualize the statement around the fact that he said this, but soon after that, he was having regular meetings with big capital, Harry Oppenheimer in particular, yes. and you talk about an elite compromise that was reached. I do want you to talk a little bit for the benefit of our audience about the early 90s and the secret meetings and the <coughs> deals that were struck back then uh, between the ANC and capital in South Africa. Because I think that's really very instructive for understanding <coughs> It's yes. very instructive for understanding where we are today, why things haven't changed. The whole transition process was orchestrated by the Mineral Energy Complex. Okay. And with uh, Harry Oppenheimer and to a lesser extent Anton Rupert, they organized everything. Uh, early in the 1990s, uh, there was regular lunches between Mr. Mandela and Harry Oppenheimer. When I became aware of it, I remember I was furious. For what must they have lunches? But these lunches uh, developed into regular meetings at Little Brunthurst. It is the, uh, the estate of Harry Oppenheimer. When too many people attend that uh, 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 me secret meetings, the meetings were shifted to the development bank between Johannesburg and Pretoria. Normally at night, uh, uh, it was easy to park the cars at the back side of the building and people on the N1 was not aware of that important meetings that was taking place there. And there the ANC was convinced to forget about their ideas of socialism and large-scale government intervention, etc. You see, America was at, in the beginning of the, the 90s, in a mood of triumphalism. Their attitude was that the American model has won, and that everyone must adapt to the American model. So under the pressure of the South African business sector, with pressure from the Americans that had quite a vested interest in South Africa. Uh, the ANC was, uh, had to cap, to, 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 to give in. You see, uh, on the question, why have they accepted the new liberal model of the Americans? That is definitely not the correct model for South Africa. It's the, 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 the bargaining power of the business sector and the Americans. But the Americans was also in a position to make use of uh, uh, threatening the ANC. That if you, in a rather diplomatic way, told the ANC, if you are not going to accept our proposals, we can destabilize South Africa. Now, so, and there is a third possibility that no one can, can prove, and I can only spe speculate it. The question is how many 
money went under the table. So there's the three re reasons. Convincing the ANC with arguments, threatening them, and buying them out. Two of, 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 or all three was at play at that, that time. Because from, from May 1992, uh, from May 92, the ANC published a document ready to govern. In that gov uh, 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 document, it was uh, clear. Uh, previously, the ANC talked about growth through redistribution. In that document of 92, they, pro they talk about redistribution through growth. And you know, the year policy was announced in uh, 1996. The so-called trickle down. If there is growth in the capitalist sector, uh, then uh, there will be a trickle down to the poor. It is not necessary to have uh, comprehensive redistributive measures. The typical American approach that with growth there will be trickled down. In uh, November 1993, South Africa was governed by the Transitional Executive Committee, the TEC. There was eight National Party ministers and eight senior members of the ANC. And they had a meeting to uh, ask the International Monetary Fund for a loan of $850 million that we need for the transition. And the IMF, and it was, of course, everything was arranged, was prepared to give the loan, but uh, they had a document, a statement on economic policy and said, yes, we will give you the money uh, if everyone, every, all 16, sign the document. And if one read that document, uh, statement on economic policy carefully, it is gear in embryo form. It is the new liberal policy. And so the ANC had no choice. Uh, it was, uh, you know, uh, after uh, in 1986 already, when Gorbachev and Reagan reached an agreement to uh, seek negotiated settlements for all the flashpoints in the world, after that, uh, uh, Reagan informed the ANC that he can't any longer, the Soviet Union can't any longer support uh, the ANC military and financially. Now, the ANC don't want us to, to mention that. As they said, uh, the, Gorbachev only told them to, to look for a diplomatic solution instead of a military solution. But uh, the truth is that uh, 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 Gorbachev had realized at that stage that the Soviet Union, after the 20 years of Brezhnev, was in a near bankrupt situation. And it is rather remarkable that the American government put quite a lot of pressure on the National Party from Washington, and that Gorbachev from Moscow was putting pressure on the ANC to seek a, a solution. But it was a solution in the end that the Americans wanted.